This time I'm in Heidelberg, Germany, famous for its charming castle, the funicular, and the longest high street in a European city. Let's go check it all out. Heidelberg is a cute university town on the Nikar River in southwestern Germany. 45 minutes drive away from Frankfurt Airport, the Alstadt, Old Town, is popular with day trippers and tours to the Heidelberg Palace. I was up early to capture some of the scenery in the glorious morning sun, but don't be fooled, it's going to get much busier as the day goes on. A Gothic church dominates the main town square, with the outer perimeter lined with cafes. Later this will be filled with seating and tourists grabbing a coffee or some lunch. The Heidelberg Bridge Monkey dates back to the 15th century and stands guard to the side of the bridge gates. It used to be a stone statue, but was previously destroyed and replaced with a bronze one in 1977. Apparently, touching the monkey means you will return to Heidelberg. The purpose for the towers either side of the gate on the Alstadt part of the bridge was to instill fear and respect into anyone entering the town. The old bridge spans the Neckar River and is fully pedestrianised, so you can take a stroll at your leisure and take in the movements on the river and get a great view of the Heidelberg Palace looming over the hillside. As the cafes start to open up, I made my way to the funicular railway. The funicular railway begins from a rather unassuming car park building. More than a million passengers a year use this service, so it's one of the most popular attractions in the town. Split into three parts, the lower and middle sections run on new trains, with the upper section still retaining a restored old original single carriage. You can decide which services you wish to use. Entry to the castle is included in the prices. One adult can enjoy the castle and all three parts of the funicular for 12 euros. Arriving early is the key to avoid the main tours that seem to arrive around 10 a.m. They can bypass the queue and take an entire carriage. You can also walk up to the castle if inclined. It's steep though, so be warned. And when the funicular is included in the price of the castle, why would you really? Please mind the gap when leaving the vehicle. As I entered the castle, the first tour groups began to form. This was around 10 a.m. The views back down over the city are beautiful and you will get a good picture of the layout of the town. Over the years, various wars, French troops blasting holes in it, and in 1764, a lightning bolt causing a fire made it permanently inhabitable. Preservation of the ruins has been the priority since. Thank you. 
building work first started in the 12th century. It is made up of a number of buildings over many hundreds of years in construction, so it does look a bit haphazard and covers many periods of German architecture. The Ortenrisch building is one of the most beautiful and oldest palace structures of the German Renaissance. Elaborate sculptures adorn the facade, with the interior showcasing examples of the luxurious decor. Today, the Emperor's Hall and the Lord's Hall are used for exhibitions. The German Apothecary Museum has resided in the basement since 1958. The sign said Big Barrel, and walking down into the cellars of the castle, I was surprised to find people crowding around a large wine barrel. There have been three giant barrels in the palace. The first was installed in 1591, holding 130,000 litres of wine, but this was destroyed in the Thirty Year War. In 1664, the second barrel, the one I think you're seeing now, was installed holding a whopping 200,000 litres. When you first entered the barrel building, everyone, including myself, thought this was the largest barrel. But wait. 100 years later, they decided to make an even larger barrel. This one, the largest wine barrel in the world, holding 220,000 litres of wine. Empty now, sadly. Standing guard over the barrel is a wooden statue of Perchio, an 18th century court jester that the then Prince Carl Philip had brought to Heidelberg to entertain the court. He was renowned for being able to hold his liquor and supposedly died from a single cup of water. You can walk around, up and over on wooden viewing platforms. The video just does not do its size justice. Walking out onto the elevated terrace, I was blessed with wonderful views of Heidelberg and the river below. But this is not the highest point for views. Due to time constraints, I decided to forfeit walking around the palace gardens and to make my way back onto the funicular, heading for the 550 meter high viewing point. The second station on the funicular offers further views and walking trails, but is also the interchange point to ride on the third and final part of the railway on board the old restored carriage. The train is slower and much smaller than the modern carriages on the previous sections you may also have to queue for a while as a result. I have sped up this part of the video, but it does take about 10 minutes to reach the summit.
Here at the top, on a clear day, you can see right across the Neckar Valley and beyond. A little cafe offers light snacks and a place to rest. Again, there are walking trails and some people do try to walk back down the side of the hill to the lower stations. For me, it was time to head back down and check out more of the old town. The town was now alive with visitors and the streets were filled with seating and hungry travellers soaking up the sun with a snack or a beer. I took to the shade and people watched with a mocktail and schnitzel salad. The banks of the river were lined with stalls, beer tents and sausage cellars doing a roaring trade. I'm not sure if this is a regular weekend thing or if this was a special event, but in any case the atmosphere was fun and exciting. Heidelberg has the longest pedestrian shopping street in a European town and although a Sunday with many shops closed, it was bustling with people strolling its length. There are many boutique shops with interesting items to buy and some more traditional carved wooden toys and trinket stores. Make sure you explore some of the side streets where more cafes and bars are waiting to welcome you. Heidelberg is a stunningly beautiful town with much to offer and I hope you're inspired to visit sometime soon. Feel free to contact me in the comments for any advice or help. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to be alerted to our future travel guides. For now, from the Memory Seekers, happy travels.